you so much. I'm sorry, Katie. I know what it's like as a worship leader to think, oh, no, I want to carry on where we are. But um, thank you so much for having Grace and uh, letting me come and chat with you today. It's really good to be here. Um, I feel so very welcome. Um, um, I'm part of Everyday Church, uh, which has venues across the, the uh, southwest London, so I'm sort of a bit familiar with this area. Um, but mainly I've come to chat to you today about the charity I work for, which is Hope at Home. Um, and that's the hat I'm wearing today. So I'll be telling you a bit more about that later. Um, just going to have a very quick look at Isaiah 58 today. Um, don't worry about finding it. I'm going to read bits to you. But um, this chapter uh, talks about true fasting and worship. And it emphasizes one of the key messages of Isaiah, which is that God's people are meant to reflect his heart. Throughout Isaiah, we repeatedly read about Israel's struggle with disobedience and being inconsistent in demonstrating um, a concern for the things that reflect his heart. That is the poor, the vulnerable, and matters of justice. And in this passage, God makes it clear that he is not interested in empty rituals like fasting, but in heartfelt humility and life-giving action. Just let me read uh, verses 3 to 7 for you. We have fasted before you. This is the Israelites saying this. They say, why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves. And what, you don't even notice it? And this is what God's response is. I will tell you why, I respond. It's because you are fasting to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers what good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourselves with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please the Lord? No, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help. So we see um, that in verse 3, the people of Israel fast in a way that promotes self-righteousness and self-absorption rather than authentic humility and concern for the neighbor. Emptied of love, such ritual observance um, will, as it says in verse 4, not make your voice heard on high. And voice verse seven to 6 to 7 points out that Genuine fasting promotes justice rather than neglect, providing the food to the hungry and shelter to the homeless. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about Hope at Home, how we provide shelter to the homeless, and how you might, with us, promote justice rather than neglect and take the Father's love into your community. There's a few numbers on a slide here that I've got for you. These are numbers according to the Global Slavery Index in 2021. 100,000 people were involved in modern slavery in the UK at any given time. And in the same year, 12,727 referrals were made to the NRM, which is the National Referral Mechanism that supports survivors from modern slavery. 
before we look at the types of slavery and exploitation people are all, all involved in, I just want to highlight the difference between people smuggling and human trafficking. It can be confusing and it gets a bit um, muddled in people's minds. So people smuggling is illegally transporting consenting people from one country to another. On arrival, they're free to go their own way. This is a terrible crime, very much, as you know, in the news at the moment, but it is a crime against the state. Whereas human trafficking is recruiting, transporting, harboring or receiving people through force, fraud or coercion with the a aim of exploiting them for profit so they're not free to go their own way. They're under the control of others. It's a crime against the individual. There are five types of slavery and exploitation that we know of. Sexual exploitation, domestic servitude, where somebody is brought over to be a domestic uh, slave in working in someone's home or in a company that doesn't pay them just to, to clean or look after children. Forced labor, often on building sites or maybe car washes. Criminal exploitation, which often involves young people running county lines, so taking drugs from cities to rural areas and sometimes uh, forced to beg, and then organ harvesting. These things happen here in this country, in this community. To understand where Hope at Home help, we're just going to look quickly at a survivor's journey. Once somebody escapes or is released by a police raid, they are then referred to uh, the NRM that starts to support them. They offer them some support and occasionally accommodation, but that's not always guaranteed because there isn't enough places for them. Sometimes they go in and out of this support and they're particularly vulnerable to being re-trafficked when, ha when that happens. A lot of uh, re traffickers know where safe houses are, they know where places are. You may have heard in the news a few months ago about a hotel that was being used in Brighton that was leaked to the press and many children at that stage went missing because they were promised work. Um, so they're at severe uh, risk of being re-trafficked and what we do is we try and aim to stop that cycle of re-trafficking by providing them safe homes within homes, within families. So we're the only UK hosting scheme for survivors of modern slavery. We train our hosts and support them well. And we work in partnership with other agencies that in turn support the guests. Who can host? Well, our hosts need to be flexible and adaptable, happy to welcome somebody into their home have a sense of humour, being willing to learn a lot about different cultures and most, most importantly probably have a spare room. Um, you can host if you're retired, if you're single, if you're working, if you're in a family, if you're not working, anyone can host. I just want to finish by telling you one of our stories of one of our guests, perhaps I think this is probably the first guest that we have living with one of our hosts. Let's call her Sarah. She is a survivor of sex trafficking. She arrived in the host's home, very anxious. She couldn't go out of the house without her body shaking and was particularly um, anxious around men. She was very withdrawn, didn't eat or sleep regularly and would have been homeless if she hadn't come to the hosts. The host gently loved her by showing her small acts of kindness, helping her to go to the GP, inviting her to join family meals. Small things made a huge difference. When Peter, the male host, um, made her a cup of coffee, she burst into tears because no man had ever shown her kindness before or made her a coffee. She began to smile more, 
even joined in some of the family jokes, sometimes at the host's expense. She couldn't believe that someone would love her so much and value her. So she started to begin to value herself. She began to volunteer in the kitchen at a lunch club for the elderly run by the local church, and she made friends with some of the volunteers. She began volunteering in the shop in the local hospital, providing regular shifts and routine for her. After about six months, she was granted indefinite leave to remain, which meant that she could stay in the UK forever. The host celebrated this with her, and the moment she hugged Peter, she clung on to him and sobbed in his arms. That was a moment that would be etched on the host's family's memory forever. She now lives in her own flat. She has a job she loves and is very much part of the community. She lives with hope again. God used the host family with all its flaws and weaknesses to show his love to this precious lady and see her life restored. The privilege was all theirs. This is how we live out Isaiah 58, sharing our food with the hungry, welcoming the stranger into our home, and seeing captives set free. Isaiah 58 verse 12 says, You shall be called the repairer of broken walls, the restorer of streets to dwell in. God has already been speaking to us this morning about the freedom we find in Christ that is available to us through Michaela and Claire's pictures. The survivors of slavery I work with need to know that freedom too. Could you be part of a freedom journey by opening up your heart and home? And in the words of Isaiah, would you be able to help rebuild and repair some of the walls of their lives? If anything I've said this morning has stirred you, do come and have a chat with me later. I'll be at the back there. Or just look us up on the website, hopeathome.org.uk. Thank you so much for your time. Do stay where you are. It would be great to pray. Um, I actually have been friends with the person who started Hope at Home, Helen, um, on Facebook for a number of years. And she's very open and honest on there. And she shouts out when there's pleas. Because there's a lot of injustice around this. There's a lot of red tape. And it can be really difficult when you are helping somebody and then they are refused something that will give them access to be able to stay or whatever. And Helen is very open and honest about that with those who are praying for them, um, but also about their family. Um, they were an imperfect family who started hosting a um, huge amount of challenges of their own, and it was beautiful. You can go on the Hope at Home website, and there's a blog by her son um, who uh, talks about what it's been like to um, be part of a hosting family. Um, and actually, he ended up doing a degree in law and is now training because he wants to help these people. So it's really positively impacted them as a family. Um, so we don't have a spare room, but this charity is incredibly um, close to my heart and Helen's passion. And she can get quite angry about the injustice. And there are times where we really do need to get angry. So I would say, please find out more. Please do consider it if you do have a spare room. If you don't, you can be supporting them financially with prayer. There are all sorts of things we can do to stand with charities who are actually really making a difference. So let's pray for Gwen and the rest of the guys now. Lord, I just thank you for your hand upon Hope at Home. God, I thank you for the joy of watching them grow and their team grow. God, I thank you for bringing such a group of passionate people together. God, I thank you for the way that you are working in them and through them. We thank you for all those people who have been helped. But just as those stats show, there are just so many more. And God, there's just um, yeah, so many more that, get, that go through the cracks, Lord. And we know your heart bleeds for them. We know that you look upon their situations and it breaks your heart. So God, I just pray that outrageous prayer, break your heart, break our hearts to what breaks your heart, Lord. 
if there are those amongst us, Lord, that you are calling to stand with Hope at Home, to do something practically, to get involved. God, I just pray you'll continue to speak to their hearts this morning, Lord, um, and, and not let it go. God, we just pray that we will be a church that stands up against injustice and that opens our hearts and our homes. Lord, we just pray your blessing upon Hope for Home. We thank you for Gwen and for her being willing to come and share with us today. Um, And yeah, we just pray for great conversations at the end of the service too. Amen.